I know they've been telling you out there all about how great Chinese tea is, okay? Don't worry about that old cobblers. I'm going to show you how to make a proper cup of tea, acne and Burmese style. Right, first of all, you need a proper kettle with a proper whistle. This is important. Do you know why it's important? No, I didn't think you did. It's scientific. It's all to do with the sonic frequency of that whistle interacting with the water and the tiny molecules of tea. Oh, incidentally, I didn't tell you. A couple of geezers come around here the other day, said I couldn't use my little gas stove. I said, why is that then? First geezer says, because it's flammable. I said, all right, okay, fair enough. The other bloke goes, you can't burn the place down with something as inflammable as that. I went, hold on. First of all, he said it's flammable. Now you're telling me it's inflammable. You want to make your minds up. Besides, what's the sound of the wing made out of it? Matchsticks? Sounds like a load of bureaucratic health and safety gone mad, if you ask me. Right, now where was I? Oh yeah, a proper cup of tea. And it's not a proper cup of tea either. It's a mug of tea. Look, that's a mug. Get yourself something with a bit of substance to it. Right, now, bung in some lovely milk. You need milk in it. Oh, by the way, George Orwell said something along the lines of... Um, on drinking a cup of tea, one doesn't feel particularly invigorated or inspired. And he also said something along the lines of, one doesn't feel any more optimistic or braver. I therefore put it to you that anybody that says they've just had a smashing cup of tea is invariably talking about Indian tea. Now, have a drop of that. See that thing on the side there? Anybody know what that's called? <laughs> It's called a handle, all right? Several people have tried to pick that up today. They're going, oh, that hurts, it's hurt. Well, of course it does, because you're not picking a cup of tea up properly. Pick it up on the handle. Try that. Tell me what you think of it. <laughs> Come on, it won't bite you. Drink tea. <laughs> well, trying to drink this tea. Is that nice? <laughs> <laughs> Try that one. <laughs> That's English assam. That one. Is that better? You got like that one better? Yeah. Okay. Now, the China. Have I, I've said this so many times today. I forget where I am. Have I told you that the Chinese didn't like the British getting hold of their plants? No. 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 Okay. Though it must have been the time before, <laughs> because the Chinese didn't like the British getting hold of the plants, the tea plants. And what the British done is they hot-footed it over to India, and they planted the Chinese plants out in India. The Chinese tea plants were planted out in India, in Bengal. And guess what they planted them next to? Opium. Opium. Result, most of the Chinese population heavily subdued under a highly narcotic and addictive drug. I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> We've still got our spices, our herbs, and our silks. The Chinese got opium. It's a fair exchange. What I find more controversial is somebody's told me recently that a body of people are claiming that the way to make a perfect cup of tea is to let the kettle come off the boil so you don't damage the essential oils of the tea. That's cobblers. It's a tea bag. Let it have it. Mind you, it might have been a different story if they let me use my gas stove, because that's interrupting my scientific process. Now, if you don't mind, you can all bugger off, because I'm going to enjoy the sport to be later. Ta-da! <laughs>